So, yeah. Uh, if you've been on my channel for quite a while, you'll know that I don't usually like to do uh, trailer breakdowns. Mainly because of how you know like, long and lengthy they are. And the trailers for Transformers 1 and Captain America Brave New World. I feel like I don't know enough about those characters and those universes in order to give an explicit breakdown. But then, this happened. Yesterday, we had finally gotten the trailer, and I was freaking out over it. Like, literally, I had filmed myself doing it, and... <laughs> Gosh, I have no idea if I have ever been excited for a movie in my entire life more than Sonic the Hedgehog 3. I kid you guys not, I have been waiting for this movie for two years. Yeah, sorry Marvel fans, but Avengers Endgame ain't got nothing on this for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, wow, this is going to be insane, and I really know a lot about all the characters from this movie and the movie itself, so if anyone is new to the Sonic franchise, this is definitely your movie to watch in order to go into Sonic the Hedgehog 3 this December. So thank you to Paramount for this trailer, and thank you to others for the video clips and images. None of these are mine, so let's head right into the trailer. So when we first start the trailer, we can see Sonic running through the forest, and I don't know exactly what's going on here, but I think it's some kind of a training session race. Because we can also see Knuckles on his one side, and Tails on the other. We then see Tails flying away in the sky in the next shot, and in this movie, it appears as though that Sonic is going to take a Transformers vibe by going global. Because as we can see in this one shot, Tails is flying, and right over here is the London Bridge. And throughout this whole sequence, Tom is heard saying to Sonic that he's finally found his family. And that's true, because when he first came to Earth in the very first Sonic movie, he had lost everything, including Longclaw, who was um, Sonic's, like, Jedi Master in this case. But now, since he's came to Earth, he's met Tom, Maddie, Knuckles, and Tails, and they've all formed into one big adoptive family. Sonic says to the others to try to keep up, so yeah, it's definitely probably like a race around the world or something. And then, Knuckles is seen jumping off of Big Ben with the Fists of Disaster. And I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys, I have not seen the Knuckles series, so I don't know how he's able to do this. But, it's a Knuckles series reference, that's all I know. And then Sonic runs over the London Bridge into the sky. And then we see something pretty interesting. Tom pulls back some shrubbery in a rocky place. So it's possible that Sonic is going to show Tom where he lived before Tom took him in. So that's pretty interesting. And we can see a picture of Longclaw and Sonic over one of those loop-de-loop -loop things on the island that he was on as a child. And Tom says that even though things have been really rough for Sonic he still has not changed who he is. And I mean, I'm gonna say, dude, good for you. You are in here. Yeah, in my lungs. Where your heart. This could also be in his bedroom because in the next shot, like you have just seen, we see a whole bunch of trophies and cars and checkered flags. And I mean, I don't know. It just, the walls seem rocky instead of wooden i have no idea where the heck they are but i don't know and then while they're in the woods sonic is running through i think this is the maze that knuckles created in the series because he's sliding up a tree branch and i mean just, i don't know it looks like the same woods where knuckles was training we then get all the logos that hold possession of this film paramount sega my bad sega <laughs> that's my bad and original film productions. We then head to this remote rock where it looks like this high-level security prison is. I don't know where this is, but I'm getting serious vibes from, like, the raft from Marvel. But I think this is the black site that was mentioned where Shadow is all the way back at the very end of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. 
a heart monitor starts to beat, and two agents look very intently at a frozen shadow. We then see this one scene in Japan, I think it is, because I'm noticing the lettering on the walls and the flying lanterns, and I'm thinking, yeah, this is definitely Japanese, Asian, or something like that, and someone is sitting down, possibly, as it's called in the trailer, Team Sonic, with the Olive Garden gun guy. And he tells whoever he's sitting down with that there's a high-level security breach. And then, boy oh boy, if he writes, Shadow starts to wake up and we get this sick shot of him punching through the glass. Oh my gosh. And can I say, the CGI they use for the frozen water? I mean, dude, you'll get a better look at it when he's walking out of the canister. And Gun has brought an entire squadron in order to check out what the heck is going on here with Shadow's Awakening. It's because, uh, yeah, there's just like a whole ton of guys, and he's just breaking out of the canister right there. Oh my gosh, this is so sick. I mean, I'm sorry, I gotta say, Shadow, for me, is he the best character in this entire movie? Duh. Go Shadow fans, I support you. We then see a vastly improved gun helicopter flying out through one of Sonic's rings, and it looks like the very same mountain range, again, that Knuckles was training on in the very first episode of the Knuckles series. And Tails is classically piloting. So, man, this guy has vastly improved from, from Sonic 2. And the gun agent is heard to say that they need Team Sonic's immediate assistance. Oi. And that composes, of course, of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. So, dang. Like I said, vast improvements. And as a whole stinking lot of gun agents arm up to fire at Shadow, we can get a better look at him, and oh my gosh, I mean, just like, literally, the frozen ice just dripping off of him? I mean, dude, this is good CGI! And can I say, Paramount, you've just chosen remarkable, incredible, character-choosing shots for this character. I mean, dude! And Keanu Reeves? Thank you, Mom! Pretty much the best voice actor that you could choose from. I mean, no offense to anyone, but I'm pretty sure he would do a much better job than Hayden Christensen. And right now I want to talk about Shadow's power. Let us not forget... In Sonic the Hedgehog 2, when Sonic became Super Sonic, his eyes changed from green to red. So, I'm gonna show you. Yeah, as you can plainly see, red glowing eyes. And then I looked at Shadow. You see the resemblance? Coincidence? I think not! And then he just disappears in a thickened cloud of electricity, almost like the Tesseract! A word to the audience? I intentionally made that reference. We then see Sonic with a flashlight looking at this dark, desolate, abandoned facility that almost looks like a laboratory. In fact, I'm sure it is. The gun guy says that Shadow is beyond anything that they could have ever encountered, and he explains a little bit more about Shadow's backstory. And boy oh boy, this is where I can really dive in and show you guys what makes Shadow, Shadow. We see two hands touching, and one of them is Shadow inside some kind of liquidy container, probably in order to prevent him from using his electronic abilities, and on the other side is his best friend, his only friend, Maria. And this is something that I've so wanted them to include in Sonic 3, because I gotta, I gotta say it right now, if you're gonna do Shadow the Hedgehog and you don't include Maria, huge mistake. But, as we can see, that is definitely not what they have done. We then see a shot of Tails, Sonic, and Knuckles getting ready to race, as we can see right here, Tom and Maddie wave a green flag signaling for them to start the race. And the gun guy says, where Sonic found family in f and uh, friends, Shadow found pain and loss. And this right here, this one shot, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. Shadow looking at an image of himself and the mirror is all cracked and destroyed. As he is. Because 
what I had mentioned about Maria being his only friend in his entire life. We can later see that there is a terrible accident at some type of laboratory or experiment place, wherever it is. Because Shadow and Dr. Robotnik's grandfather are kneeling down and they have Maria dead in their arms. And if that wasn't crazy enough, we got one of the craziest lines ever in the Sonic 3 trailer right at this next bit. You guys probably are not going to believe me. All right, we got a rogue alien on the loose. How do we find it? That one line right there. I don't know why I didn't think of it when I first saw the trailer, but Sonic says the word alien, not creation. Does this mean that Dr. Robotnik's grandfather didn't create Shadow, but rather found him as an alien in space, imprisoned him, and started to experiment on him? Possibly enhancing him with the power of the Master Emerald? And throughout all of these traumatic and painful experiences, Maria was the only person in Shadow's life who tried everything that she could to ease his pain? Eh, this seems about right. I have never said this on camera before, but there is a reason why I like to refer to Shadow as the Loki of Sonic the Hedgehog. So I am no more than another stolen relic, locked up here until you might have use of me. Who put me there? WHO PUT ME THERE?! This is a villain who is extraordinarily hurt, who is a hero in his own eyes, just trying to rid the world of everything purely evil. Just misled. And to add to Dr. Robotnik's Pokes the Bear, there are some theories out there that S Shadow doesn't remember anything when this movie starts. So, according to that theory, after this scene, Robotnik's grandfather takes Shadow, imprisons him again, puts him on ice, and wipes all of his memories. But when he starts to wake up, he slowly starts to remember more and more, and the more he remembers, the more pain, the more anger entices him. And just so you know, we're not even halfway through this trailer yet. <laughs> But there was a lot to cover there. So, um, we then see Sonic and Tails flying in the helicopter, trying to find Shadow, and then there is this massive fireball somewhere in Tokyo. How do I know this is Tokyo? Because of when Shadow uh, is fighting Knuckles, Tails, and Sonic, it just, you get better views. And the guys are just like, all right, let's start with a giant fireball. Tails, Knuckles, and Sonic jump out, and they meet up with Shadow, and oh my gosh, how stinking thick! Oh, dude. I mean, he's just walking through fire, and oh my gosh. But, but like I said, you can definitely see a better view of the lettering all around. Like, if you look right above Sonic, you can see, yep, that's Tokyo. And even Knuckles is impressed by Shadow. Much more impressive than the hedgehog I fought previously. Dude, I'm standing right here. You're a colorful bunch. We don't want to fight you. Actually, Sonic, I would like to fight. Of course you would. But as poor Knuckles is about to find out, that choice de-escalates. Quickly. Because Shadow stinking teleports with lightning. Oh my gosh, how stinking sick. And he just owns Knuckles, Tails, and Sonic, and the rocket sues! Oh my gosh, that's so sick and sick! And then, again, in London, we get this flying UFO that comes out of the water, and Shadow is taken running on water. So my guess is, this is the scene where he escapes the Black Sight's security prison. Even Sonic agrees that Shadow is too powerful for him to face alone, because... As we can see, he's stinking giving it to a whole bunch of gun agents, including Tom. What the heck he's doing there? I have no idea, but I mean, he's a stinking gun agent in this one scene. And then Shadow just electrocutes with a punch. And then we get this really, oh my gosh, almost like deathly shot of a ring opening up with Shadow's electric abilities. And it's sucking everything in with Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails tied to a post on a pier. 
Oh my stinking gosh, Shadow! This so reminds me of the Paramount version of the Fantastic Four that they did in 2015. This guy is more than just a living weapon. He is a living stinking apocalypse. We then see the police surrounding Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. Knuckles looks grimly, but Tails, and especially Sonic, look extraordinarily heartbroken. And then Sonic is heard to say, I can't believe we're seeing this, but we need you-know-who, referring to Eggman. And this, I do believe there is something around this. I think I know what's going to happen. Because in the next shot, we get, um, of course, uh, Stone, the gay guy, uh, with a motorcycle and this giant crab that emerges behind him. Tails says that this is a bad idea, and Sonic says, when has that ever stopped me? And I gotta say, he looks stinking ticked. So this is probably where he agrees to work with Eggman, but what I'm thinking is gonna happen is, in the last video I mentioned that Shadow could possibly kill Tom. Actually, in order to enforce this kind of an attitude and not just have him, you know, like, mourn and stuff like that, I think Shadow's not gonna kill Tom, but instead just hurt him really, really bad. So, Tom ends up in the hospital, and Sonic is enraged and wants to go after Shadow. And this is the first time, probably ever in a Sonic movie, aside from when he became Super Sonic in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, that we're going to see Sonic's dark side. We then see a trashy Eggman lair with a whole bunch of pizza boxes and Chinese food boxes sitting all over the place. Dude. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not going to show the next scene because I just, I can't. So anyway, Stone comes in, Dr. Eggman is taken in by surprise, and everyone is completely disgusted. Awkward. The visitors, Team Sonic, is announced, and Knuckles is just like, dude, this is sad. And Sonic officially states it that they need Eggman's help in order to stop Shadow. This is the first time we've ever seen Jim Carrey as Dr. Eggman in a Sonic film as a good guy and not as the main antagonist. However, that could change. We'll get back to this in a minute. But for now, Eggman agrees to work with Sonic underneath one condition, and Sonic gives Eggman one of his quills to power up his inventions in order to stop Shadow. And classically, I mean, you can't have a Sonic the Hedgehog movie without Jim Carrey electrocuting himself. So then, what? Do this! Eggman starts to suit up, and again, I'm gonna skip the next scene because crude. And in case anyone had any doubts, this December, baby! Eggman and Sonic walk out of this facility alone, well, facility, I don't know where they even came from in the first place, but I think they're going to the abandoned laboratory that we saw earlier in this trailer. Shadow runs sideways on a wall in a tunnel, and then there's just this giant electronic blast that shorts out the whole stinking city. Could it be Shadow? I don't know. It could be, because that's where the flaming cars are, right here, and this right here. They had to use this pose. This is such the iconic, I mean, this, this right here, this is Shadow. And Shadow says to Sonic, when we're done, there will be nothing left. So. I don't know whether or not he's planning of destroying the whole Earth, but he's definitely going to exact his revenge upon the people who hurt him. Keyword, Eggman, and in this case, Sonic, for the sake of getting in his way. And Sonic goes running along, and Shadow is on the stinking motorcycle! Yes! This is directly incorporated from the actual Shadow the Hedgehog, the game, and yeah, they have taken inspiration off of Sonic the Hedgehog 3, the game, and Shadow the Hedgehog for this movie, I believe the directors have said. Shadow is told by Sonic, hey, no cheat code, as I quote. Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails start running, and I'm thinking that there's not just going to be a fight scene, I'm thinking there's going to be a chase. 
because, I mean, come on. In a movie with both Shadow and Sonic, you definitely have to watch to see, you know, like, who's faster. So, you know, they just wanted to throw that in there, I'm sure. Knuckles, back here in the door, watches as Tails jumps out of one of um, Eggman's giant machines. Another shot with Eggman looking around at the laboratory. And we then see that it's Knuckles, Tails, and Sonic talking to the gun guy. And a whole bunch of missiles start firing at them. So my guess is they, you know, go to Tokyo. They fight Shadow. They chase him off. But then he comes back for round two and does this. Sonic saves the gun guy. And then majorly ticked off, Sonic just looks at something or someone and says, What did you do? And then Shadow just replies, what I had to. Further implying that he's going to wreck Sonic really, really bad. Either, like I said, he's going to destroy Green Hills, he's going to kill Tom, or hopefully just hurt him really extraordinarily bad. Or, there is another alternative possibility that I thought of. Ever since day one, Robotnik's grandfather was the cause of Shadow's pain and suffering. What if him killing Eggman's grandfather opens up a can of worms so hard that it helps Jim Carrey to reprise his role as Dr. Eggman as a villain? So Keanu Reeves, you just may have saved Jim Carrey's career in Sonic. Or at the same time, ended it by killing his character. And his grandfather as well. I'm not sure about Eggman himself being killed, but I don't know. I don't know what exactly is going to happen. Bottom line, Shadow is going to do something huge. We then see this other sick shot of uh, Shadow skating with his motorcycle on, I believe this is one of Eggman's machines, or up this, like, building. But either way, he runs into the sky and blasts down back at Sonic, waiting for them to fight fist to fist. We then get the logo, and the biggest mind grenade out of all the mind grenades in this trailer that I ever could have thought of. Robotnik's grandfather is still alive! Robotnik looks at his grandfather like, what? And his grandfather just looks back at him like, yep. It's impossible. Is it? It couldn't be. Couldn't it? I am. Are you? In the saggy flesh. And as you can tell, Robotnik's grandfather is a genius. Due to the fact that he was doing, you know, those whacked out experiments on an alien, and the fact that he has a similar character to Eggman himself by being able to read his grandson's mind and peer, uh, appearing superior in intellect to his adversaries. Well, all except for Robotnik, who is not an adversary, who is family. Because, you know, as we later on see, hug scene, they love each other. And that was the cover for the trailer breakdown for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. I hope that you guys enjoyed, and I hope that I provided some very helpful insights onto anyone who is a little bit new to the Sonic movie franchise. And I hope you guys are going to enjoy this movie as much as I am. I swear I'm going to see this in IMAX. But um, other than that, make sure to like this video if you are a huge Sonic and Shadow fan and are ready to see this movie. Give this video um, a like, share, subscribe, all those amazing things so you can stay up to date on more Sonic... Uh, pieces of news that I will cover and more. And uh, yeah, that Q&A is still happening at the end of November. I will hopefully give a much more vivid update about that in the next video. But with that said and done, uh, please make sure to tell your friends about this uh, Q&A video because <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome and I'm looking forward to uh, doing it very much. So with all that said and done, respectful eye guys out there, peace out.